You guys have no idea how excited I am to take this out for a spin. This is the Sony A7 Mark III, which I've just received. I'm really, really excited to start using this camera. Um, in the meantime, though, I'll be able to shoot my YouTube tutorials with this as well. So, are you ready? We're going to switch from my usual camera to the Sony in 3, 2, 1, and... Okay, how's that looking? It should be so much sharper and the image quality and color should be significantly better. I'm really, really excited to try this camera out. In the meantime, roll the intro. What's up team, my name is Mark and welcome back to Making Instagram Bangers, the series where I teach you all the tips and tricks that I use to shoot and edit my photos. So today I'm walking you through my workflow and the steps that I take to try and bring an image back to life. So we're gonna be turning this image right here which is really gray, really dark. It was taken on a cloudy day, there was no sun, all the colors were really desaturated and we're gonna turn it into this fairy tale looking photo right here. So there's different steps involved and I'm gonna walk you through each one of them individually. Now do keep in mind this doesn't work on every single photo but it should give you an idea of how I work and how I edit my photos and there's a couple of different tips and tricks in there that you'll definitely be able to reuse on your own photos. So let's jump right into it. Okay, step number one, sussing out what's wrong with the image and what the aim is. Now, as you can see with this image right here, the top portion is really dark, the bottom is quite bright, but there's, there's not a lot of color, it's quite desaturated, there's not a lot of shadows going on, so we're gonna try and work on that and slowly rebuild the fairy-like look of this photo. So already I know that I'm gonna try and brighten up this whole top area. I'm gonna try and balance things out, add a bit of contrast. I'm feeling like this water here could be pumped up a little bit, made a little bit more blue, a little bit more fairy tale like for example. And I'm already feeling like I wanna add a sun or some sort of a light source in the top right corner. So I'm gonna walk you through each of those steps, starting with step number two, basic corrections. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. That way it's done, I can focus on something else. Now, with most of these photos, I like to pull the highlights down and the shadows all the way up. That way I know how much dynamic range I've got and what I can work with. Now already I can see that at the top of the image, there's a lot more detail there than I thought there was. So I've actually got quite a bit of room to work with. I'm going to start by pumping the exposure up just a little bit, maybe to 0.6, something like that, just to open up the image, give it a bit more light and a bit more life. So this is looking pretty good. Um, I might change the white balance. I always like to go auto and see how that looks. Um, yeah, I reckon that looks pretty good. I might tweak it a little bit later on, but I find that auto white balance works pretty well for me, but often later on in the process, I'll come back to it and tweak it a little bit. But for the start, just for the basic stuff, it works pretty well. Right, so I'm gonna hold down the options key and pull the whites up somewhere around plus 44. I just want a couple of white dots appearing. I'm gonna pull the blacks down somewhere around here. There we go, I want a bunch of little black dots to start appearing and I'll be able to fade those. So I'm just gonna turn this on and this on. This shows me where the whites and the blacks are clipping. So that's already looking pretty good. Because I do have some black clipping and I want a fairy tale like moody atmosphere, I'm gonna add three dots on the tone curve and add a little bit of a fade. There we go, bring that down, bring that back up and maybe crush the whites just a little bit. Adding an S curve using the tone curve is an easy way to bring back an image that looks very, very flat. So in this scenario, I've only pulled it down a little bit, but you can be a little bit more aggressive if you want. So I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast up here. Let's say plus 30. I want the image to be quite striking. It wasn't before. I wanna push that up a little bit. And I want all these edges to be sharp. So I might just pull the clarity up a bit. There we go, plus 30, something like that. That's already looking much sharper. Um, I might pull the vibrance up just a little bit. There we go, get some light and some colors back into this photo that was really flat to start up with. And maybe pull the saturation down just a bit. The idea is to bring a bit of vibrance into the image, but we don't want the image to be too saturated, too strong. There we go, that's already looking pretty good. Now, 
I am going to cheat in this one. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm going to add a little bit of a teal and orange effect to this photo. So I'm just going to pull the reds up here, say plus 25, there we go, and pull the blues down to minus, uh, let's try 35, there we go. Something like that. I know I want to push it in that general direction and there's already something going on. Like you can see these rocks start to contrast a little bit more. The water is looking a little bit more blue. I'm going to work on these trees in just a second, but for now I really want to start by pushing it in that teal and orange direction and I can fine tune it later on. Okay, step number three, create a light source. Okay, so for this I'm going to start by adding a radial filter, big radial filter up in this corner right here. This is going to be our light source. Now this is a bit too strong, so I'm just going to turn it back down and let's add a bit of warmth to this. There we go, something like that looks pretty good. I might pull the exposure up a bit. There we go, get big strong light coming from there. There we go, plus one, something like that should be fine. I might dehaze it just a little bit. So if we go negative and dehazing, that actually adds haze to the image. And that's quite useful when you're going for, you know, adding your own sun to an image, for example. But I don't want it to be too strong. So let's leave it at, let's say, minus seven. That should be fine. And I'm just going to pull the saturation down because I do feel like the colors are starting to be a bit too strong in that corner. I just want to use it for light for now. There we go, that's already looking pretty good. However, I do feel like there's a little bit too much light in this area here. I want the light to pour from this corner all the way down to this guy standing right here, but this is a bit too bright. So what I'm gonna do is grab a graduated filter and then put it here, over here. There we go, something like that. I'm just gonna turn the exposure down a little bit. There we go, something like that, minus 0.7, that should be fine. There we go, we're already getting a little bit of a better look to this image. I'm gonna scroll down now and add a bit of a crop. Again, this is all because I want to emphasize the light right in the center of the image. So I'm just gonna get some vignetting going on here. There we go, that's already looking pretty good. As you can see, now the light is focused on this guy right here, and we've got a nice light source coming from here. Now I'm gonna add some light rays as well, so I'm just gonna grab the brush tool. I'm just gonna brush a couple of fake lines from the corner here. This is a cheeky little hack, and I talked about this in another video, but it's really good for just creating a little bit of emphasis and a little bit of light coming from the corner of your image. Now. You could do this in Photoshop as well and add some overlays and some actual light rays and make it look proper, but if you've only got a couple of minutes and you want to do it in Lightroom, this is an easy way of doing it. There we go, so that's a bit too strong. I'm just going to tone it down a bit. And there we go, 0.5, something like that. That looks pretty good. Now we can really see the light shining down from that corner. It's not too strong, but it's looking pretty good already. Okay, so I'm really happy with the overall luminosity of the image and where we've put the contrast. Now we're gonna start fixing up some of these colors. So step number four, color corrections. Okay, so for this image, I know that I want the overall tone to be orange and blue, sort of golden and blue. So I'm gonna go down to the split toning section and I'm just gonna put some orange, something like this to get that golden atmosphere going on and I'm going to balance it out by adding a lot of blue in there as well. There we go, that's probably a bit too strong, something like... Something like that's already looking pretty good. Now, split toning is a really, really useful tool if you want to create an atmosphere in your photos. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up to the Hue, Saturation and Luminance panel. Now, I want to add a lot more green up here. I feel like this is slightly too warm now, so what I'm going to do is pull the yellows up just a little bit, somewhere around here, and then pull these greens up as well. Let's get some green back into this photo. Something like that is already looking much better. I might bring the saturation up on these as well. So if we bring the saturation on the yellow, there we go. That's looking gorgeous now. We've got some gorgeous greens and yellows that are starting to pop up in here. It's looking really, really nice. Now what we can do as well is grab a graduated filter and put it over this area here where we've got all these trees and grass. I'm just gonna put it down like this. And there we 
go. I'm going to reset it and I'm just going to bring the tint down ever so slightly. Let's say minus 20, something like that. And maybe pull the temperature down just a bit so these golden colors aren't too strong. There we go, something like that. I might make it just a little bit smaller so it covers the area nicely. All right, we're looking pretty good in terms of colors. I'm quite happy with this. However, the image might be a little bit too golden. Let's see if I can pull the saturation down this split toning just a little bit. There we go, that's already looking much more balanced. Now again, this is one of those things where it's gonna be a question of going back and forth between hue, saturation, and luminance, and fine tuning some areas that you think don't look quite right. But I'm really happy with how this has turned out so far. Okay, now step number five, final tweaks. Okay, so this one right here, I'm gonna start by coloring this water. Now, I'm gonna grab the brush tool, and I'm just slowly gonna brush over all of this water area here. Bear with me, my computer is running pretty slow today. There we go, I'm just gonna brush over this. There we go, cover all this nicely. And once that's done, I can reset that brush and slowly pull the temperature down so we can get stronger blue in that area. There we go, that's looking pretty nice. I might just pull the saturation down a little bit because it might be a bit too strong. There we go, I reckon that's looking pretty good. And lastly, I wanna add a little bit more emphasis on the focal point of this photo, which is the guy standing here. So I'm gonna grab a radial filter and just paste it over this guy right here. I'm gonna reset the exposure boost the temperature up a little bit just so it's warmer so we can really see that area. I might push the exposure up just a tiny bit, ever so slightly. And one thing that I really like to do if you want to add a bit of emphasis on a character in one of your photos is to push the clarity up. I find that it adds a lot of sharpness and a lot of emphasis. It works really well for me. And there we go, that's looking really, really nice. I'm super stoked with how this turned out. Now, of course, the last step is going to be to crop this. Now, for this scenario, I'm going to crop it in the standard ratio, I'm just gonna keep it as it is, but I am gonna follow the rule of thirds, which means placing the character at the intersection of two lines on the grid. And there we go, that looks super, super nice. I'm really happy with how it's turned out, especially considering where we came from. Now, we took a photo that was really gray and turned it to something fairy tale like really vibrant, strong, and a lot of color, and it almost feels now like there was a lot of sun naturally coming from the sky when there wasn't originally. Now what I could do is right click, create a virtual copy and crop this for the Instagram ratio. So this involves clicking the crop tool, clicking four by five and pressing X so that it goes vertical. And there we go, something like that. I reckon that looks really, really nice. I'm super stoked with how this turned out. And there you have it guys, five easy steps to bring your photos back to life. Now we went from this photo right here, which is pretty bland, pretty gray, pretty boring pretty much, and turned into this Instagram banger right here. Now again, the aim of this tutorial isn't to give you a step-by-step -step process that you can copy and paste and that's always gonna work on every single photo. The aim is to give you a couple of ideas and insights into how I edit my photos and how I was able to bring a boring photo back to life using a couple of different tricks that you can use on your own photos. And that's it for the tutorial, guys. I hope you found this useful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. It really helps me out. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm making more tutorials every week. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. I'm a photographer, videographer, and I teach you all the things that I know. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. And in the meantime, stay creative, guys. Take care.